let's not let's not do therapy for all these. We're just doing the expenses. We're not doing a little a little debrief. Okay, okay. Hello YouTube, welcome back to the Emmy Closet channel. Thank you so, so much for being here. You are awesome for being here. Hit that like button for yourself cause you're the real MVP here. My name is Stephanie and along with my partner, Ethan, we are two full-time resellers. We do clothing reselling and we do it on apps like Poshmark, Facebook Marketplace, eBay-ish, Depop-ish, <laughs> mainly Poshmark. So let's just get it over with. And that is the annual recap of our first year of reselling. So in this video, I'm gonna go over our net total with you guys. Yay, finally. And I'm gonna go over our expenses. I'm gonna go over how much we made uh, for the whole year, how much we've made per month, how much was our revenue, our expenses that month, and then our profit, which is how we've been counting things. Um, yeah, and then I'm just gonna go over a bunch of our expenses with you guys. I'm not gonna go over everything we sold because um, there are other videos for that. Check them out here, 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 here. I don't know how YouTube works. I just wanna note that some of the numbers will not be the exact numbers that you would have heard me say if you've been following along with us for our monthly recap videos. And that's for a few different reasons. One is I was tracking all those numbers on paper and that's like on my wall in my closet versus this is the actual amounts that hit our accounts. So things like return cases, things like if we ship something over five pounds and Poshmark had to deduct a few dollars for that. Random little, little things like that. Like if we won, maybe love it or list it and then ended up using that for inventory, you know, it's, it gets a little murky, but these are the actual numbers that actually hit our account. And then additionally, I tend to round down when I'm estimating um, income. I don't like to be disappointed by the number. So I, I usually round every dollar down. And um, as well, another, another reason is that I have been calculating what we've been making of the US closet with the same exact exchange rate all year. And obviously that fluctuates. I've been estimating it at 1.2. Um, sometimes it's been higher, not very much, but it's probably been lower. And so that also messes with the numbers a little bit, um, but these are the actual numbers. So um, without any further ado, let's get into it. And then after we go through each month's numbers, I'm going to go over with you guys all of the expenses, what they were throughout the year. And um, at the end, we'll go over what we got for all those expenses, um, our yearly totals and takeaways. Let's just start here with January. And in January of 2021, we brought in $1,855 and our expenses were $2,537. Um, so we had a net income that month of negative $682. Uh, for a year to date net income of negative $682. So in February, we had a little bit of a dip. We brought in $1,664. We expensed a lot that month. I remember that month. We expensed a lot, got a lot of inventory, got a few other big staples that we use to this day for $3,246 in expenses. And so that month we had a net income of negative $1,582 and 42 cents. So that made our year to date net income a minus $2,264. Next we had March where we had our first big like bump of growth. We brought in $2,571 in March. We expensed only, only only $2,449 in March. And so we actually had our first positive net month for a positive total of $121, which made our net for the year to date go back to um, negative $2,143. So that was good. In April, we had another little uh, tick up in our numbers. So we brought in $2,809. Um, we expensed a lot that month. We expensed $4,572. I believe we had a computer in there that month is what happened. But um, 
So our net income that month was a total of negative one thousand seven hundred and sixty two dollars. Uh, so then our year to date net income at the end of April was negative three thousand nine hundred and six dollars. Uh, May was kind of just a steady month. It was almost equal to April. So we brought in two thousand seven hundred and forty four dollars. Uh, we only expensed $1,185 that month. So our net income that month was the highest it had been yet, which was $1,559. So that helped our year to date net quite a bit. And our year to date net income went back to negative $2,346. The next month was June. So now we're six months in. And we had another kind of just steady month, similar numbers, $2,814 we brought in and we expensed $3,381 for a total net of negative $566, which brought our year to date net to $2,913. Now July was where we start to see some of our hard work paying off. Our US calls it picked up a bit and we had an almost 1,000 jump in our revenue. So our revenue in July was $3,749, yay! And we expensed $1,815 for our highest netting month yet, which was positive $1,934. So after the end of July, our year-to-date net income was negative $979. Uh, next was August. And again, August was just a big, huge jump as well. So June to July was a jump and July to August was a big jump. We revenued $5,064 in August. We expensed though $5,335. So we had a net income that month of negative $270, which brought our year to date net income to negative $1,249. In September, we had another really cool month. So our revenue that month was $5,172. Um, I believe this is higher than August because of the way Poshmark pays you. So this is the money hitting our account from our really good August sales month. Um, that's why it's a, also another reason it's a bit different from the monthly recap videos is because you don't get paid when you make the sale on Poshmark, you get paid a bit after. This was mostly reflective of our amazing August sales, but yes, we revenued $5,172, which is our highest month yet. And we expensed $4,804 for a net income of $368.33. So our year to date total went down a bit or up a bit to negative $881.58. Next was October. October and November dipped a little, but Honestly, we had such stratospheric growth between June, July, and August that I'm not super concerned about it. But let's just, that's, yep. Okay, the revenue in October was $4,448 that hit our account that month. And our expenses that month were $4,610. So that was a net total of negative $162. That one kind of caught us by surprise. We were like, oh crap, I thought we were going to be in the green this month. We were not. So our year to date net income then went down a bit to negative $1,043. November though, we did a lot better net wise. We revenued $4,538 and we expensed only $1,654. So our net income in November was the highest it's ever been at a positive $2,884, making our year to date finally in the green for the first time ever, our year to date net income $1,840 at the end of November. Yikes. That's kind of what I've been alluding to all this time. And then our December numbers 
I don't actually know them right now, but you know who knows them? Ethan the editor, Mr. Future Ethan. So our revenue in December was this number. Yay! I hope. And our expenses in December were this number for a total monthly net of this amount. And for a year-to-date net income, so for the entire 12 months, adding them all up, the pluses and minuses, this is our final net number. I hope it's green. Someone tell me it's green. <laughs> okay, so those are our numbers. Let's look at a few little graphs. I have some graphs. So here we have the monthly profit versus loss. As you can see, we kind of went through a spend a lot one month, spend a little less the next month pattern, but the uh, revenue was steadily increasing. And so as you can see, and these are slightly outdated because as you can see, December's not over yet, but as you can see at the very end of this graph, the revenue crosses over that big old expense line and we also see a good like steady amount of growth in terms of the year-to-date revenue as well as the year-to-date and it and it goes up in a nice linear fashion and kind of evens out near the end so those were our numbers for the year that is what i mean when i say we didn't net a lot this year we did not live off this income this year. Um, it is very clear that you can't live off that, especially not where we live. But now I wanna go over what did we buy for all that much money because we actually did gross. I'm not sure what the December numbers end up being, but over, by the at the end of November, our year-to-date revenue was $37,433. So, and our year-to-date expenses were $35,592. So what I wanna talk about now is what did we spend $35,592 on that I'm not that worried about the fact that we spent it. So let's go over what kind of expenses it took us to start up. Um, you're gonna hear a lot of things that I don't think you need. Probably pay attention to those, but a lot of these expenses are unavoidable parts of reselling and I think unavoidable parts of starting up a business. So this is something I wanna go over with you guys and um, let's get into it from there. Okay, so our total spend, and I'm not including December in this, so if we buy anything notable, do you wanna pop it up here, Ethan? Probably just inventory costs and monthly expenses that we usually have. Now that I'm saying this, we bought a hanger stand and I love it, so. That's one thing we bought, you know, little things like that, they add up. But let's go over the expenses from the year. So what did we get for all that friggin' money? Um, the first thing we got, and we got a lot of it, was poly mailers. We bought a lot of poly mailers, we got them off Amazon, we also got a few for free, but we got a lot of poly mailers off Amazon. Um, we bought way more than we needed for the year because our original inventory system was storing all of our inventory in poly mailers, right? So before we switched out of that, we just had a ton of poly mailers. We had enough to ship everything that we sourced at all. So um, we spent around $800, I'd say, this year on poly mailers. But I would also say that if we run out of poly mailers anytime in the next 12 months, then business must be so freaking booming because we have enough poly mailers to mail like every rock on your favorite beach to the Queen of England. That was a weird choice. We have a lot of poly mailers. Next, we got a half ton of tape and also a few tape guns. Um, you need tape to package stuff, especially. We went through a lot more tape before we got our Rolo, but even so, you still need to tape boxes closed. So we spent around $300 on packaging tape and tape guns throughout the year. Um, we do have quite a few. We're probably good for at least a few months, but not quite as crazy as I went on poly mailers. Um, we got a paper cutter for when we were doing labels. Honestly, I don't think you need that, nor should you probably spend money on it, but we did it. And we also got a paper shredder. Um, Ethan insisted on this. He is, as you might know, a lawyer, so he thinks that documents should be shred. 
and I am on board if that's what he thinks. So we got those two things and they totaled around $100. Um, we also paid this year for Adobe Premiere Pro, a monthly subscription for YouTube video editing, um, Photoshop and Lightroom, you know, the, the entire Adobe package. We got all that. And so that's $78 a month. Three industrial shelving units from Rona. And we spent around $700 on those. Um, we also bought a kind of expensive computer. Uh, we were also, again, we bought it around the time that we were flipping graphics cards. Um, someone wouldn't give us a graphics card unless we bought it in a computer. And we were kind of just like, yeah, we kind of need a second computer anyway. So we spent about $4,000 on this computer and the whole setup and the graphics card and everything we got and this is a mistake don't make this mistake we got 20 sterilite bins from walmart um we got really big ones and they were how we used to store inventory we don't anymore um we sold about half of them on marketplace and we keep half of them around for storing hard goods storing shoes scarves and things like certain things that we don't always put into our inventory system. Like I said in the inventory video, Ethan, can you pop up the inventory video? Thank you. Stuff that we don't store in our regular bins, we use those big bins for. And we also store some personal stuff in those big bins now. So they weren't a complete waste of money, but we did drop around $400 on those and they're not currently strictly needed. So get smaller bins the first time around because you're gonna want them. You're gonna want them real much more than you want bigger bins. We bought a tiny little action camera called the InstaGo 360. Um, I've used it once. I'm so sorry. I, I'm gonna use it. It's to film thrift with me's in Value Village where they'll kick you out for filming. So you can like hook this thing up to a, a magnetic necklace that comes with it. And it just sits here and then I can like kind of just unzip and like, hey, thrift with me guys, but on the DL. Um, that's kind of why I bought it. And also we had a very, very, very old GoPro for an action camera. And so yeah, this this camera was $400 and um, has not been put to great use yet, but we just got it recently and it's gonna be put to great use and we're gonna do some thrift with me's cause I'm gonna use the things I bought. Okay, we bought lint rollers. Um, again, we bought so many lint rollers. We should really at this point invest in some reusable lint rollers, but uh, I've tried a few and they don't work. And we have so much cat hair. There's so much cat hair. So right now we're still using, I'm so sorry it's wasteful, but we're still using the disposable lint rolling papers. And we have about six months worth of those. Maybe not six months, maybe three months, but yeah, about a year's worth plus about three months worth. So we probably spent around $400 on different lint rolling, lint removal devices, which is fun. Um, we bought a bunch of dry erase markers, green painter's tape, cellophane bags, everything that we currently use from our inventory system video. Um, that's just all wrapped into this one bullet point. I'm gonna say we spent around $1,000 on that. Ethan, can you put up the link to that video or did you already? Does everyone wanna hit the video? We spent around $1,000 on just like odds and ends, little things, and especially those cellophane bags. We've bought thousands of those. So um, we have a lot of those. We made another mistake. We bought a crappy steamer and it broke and then we bought another crappy steamer and it broke. So then we finally bought our $130 steamer that we use to this day. So buy the good steamer the first time because if you're just gonna buy something that's gonna break off like because it's cheaper, it, you're wasting money if you're gonna have to buy a new one soon, right? Yes, around $170 on two bad and one very good steamer. Um, we bought this, this photo tent that we sit in all the time. Um, I'm still not sure if I regret this or not. It was a choice and it was an expensive choice with $600. This exact photo tent um, was recommended to me by someone who sells on US Poshmark and on US Amazon, it's $300. So do I think you should spend 300 US dollars on it as an American? Uh-huh, hands down, that's awesome. Do I think you should spend 600 as Canadian? I don't know. And the price fluctuates depending on 
I don't even know what. So try and get it when it's its lowest. But yeah, we that bill for us came out to around six hundred dollars. We do use it a lot, to be fair. But still. We bought a lot of hangers as well as two clothing racks from Amazon. Um, a really, really big one and a second medium sized one. And all of that together was around $300. We bought thank you stickers and thank you notes because we weren't sure what we wanted at first. We're sticking with the stickers. Those should also last us a good year or so for the amount that we have. We also bought a bunch of card stock that should also last us about a year. Um, and we now print our custom thank you cards on those. So all that all together was probably around only a hundred dollars. So I don't, I don't think that's a bad expense for your business. Um, we brought two sweater shavers. Why? Because I'm excessive and I like having, like if Ethan's using one, I need the other one, you know, you uh, no, you only need one, but we spent $50 on getting two. We bought a, oh, here's another mistake. Isn't this fun? This is a great, this is a great recap for me. Yikes. I bought two months of a monthly subscription to List Perfectly. Could I use it during that time? No. Um, when we opened the US closet, I thought like, oh, I'll just use this to cross list and then I'll manually cross list Canada. No, 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 no. I love your services, List Perfectly and Vendu, but don't use them, Canadians, because you can't. So we use a uh, Prime Lister now. So we got two months of List Perfectly, and then the rest of the months we got $63 Canadian per month for Prime Lister. And Prime Lister is a huge help in our business. This is an indispensable expense for me. I think that without it, we would die. So you need cross-listing platform i think i think it's very important and if you're canadian you need prime lister and if you're even if you're an american prime lister is still a good one and you can cross list to poshmark canada and to ebay.ca and to a few other things that you can't on the others so still good just saying we have an affiliate link i'm dead inside Okay, we bought a few structured collapsible square bags. We use those to carry packages in usually. And we also use them as reusable bags when we're shopping at thrift stores. Um, they were $50 for all of them. We have like eight of them and I have no regrets. They're amazing and we use them all the time. Um, which brings me to our Hogan bag. Um, this was a gift, so it was not an expense. It was $0 for us, but we do have a Hogan bag in size XL. And I need to mention that because you need to buy it because it is the single most used thing in our business. I think if you had to take everything else away and I had to run my business, I could not do it without the Hogan bag. I would go crazy, um, especially living in an apartment, right? Because when you, we park on P3 and then it's quite a walk to the door and then it's a walk to the elevator and then from the elevator to our apartment, you know, like it's, it's a lot of lugging things around. If you live in a house and you're just going from garage to your kitchen, I guess maybe lugging things around isn't as big of a deal, but it is to me living in an apartment. So Hulk and Meg is a must. Thank you very much, Brianna. We use it all the time. We opened the US closet in April. And so that's when we started incurring shipping costs through cost barter shippers. Um, we exclusively used letter lock until I think November when we realized or when maybe they opened Shortly after they opened, um, DYK Shipping is now in Richmond. So now we go back and forth between the two, depending on the cost. So Letter Lock lets you do 25, up to 25 pounds of packages for $16, um, which has been good and bad, depending on how many packages we have. And Richmond DYK Post does $1 per package. So if you have, it, d it depends on how many packages you have, which one's going to be cheaper for you. Um, I think Stallion Express is also in Richmond now, but I don't, we haven't used it. And honestly, they're pretty equidistant from where we are. It's about a 55 minute drive either way. Um, that doesn't really come into account for us. Um, though what does come into account is that we've met a lovely posher, Julia. Hi, Julia who carpools with us now with our packages. So that saves us a lot of time and it saves us money on gas. And the next expense, oh, that's right, it's gas. <laughs> um, yeah, like I said, it's a 55 minute drive and we've shipped 
two to three times a week since May. So um, it's a significant expense for gas. I'm estimating around $2,000. Ethan has it, you know, kind of broken down by month exactly. But um, I tried to do this video by month expense, month by month expenses. And guess what? We were here for four hours. So we're not doing that. The next is a Rolo printer with a bunch of Rolo labels. I don't know exactly how much a Rolo printer is right now. Maybe even could pull one up on Amazon or something. But we bought the printer plus a bunch of labels. So we spent around $500 on that so far. We will spend more because we will need more labels. I do not know when it'll come. Another thing I wanted to say really quickly, really quickly, about the cross-border shippers and how far we drive to them. I have been looking and not hard enough and I'm gonna go back to it but I've been looking for cross-border shippers in Saskatchewan and Manitoba and the entire Maritimes and I haven't found any and so I get messages from a lot of people throughout the lower mainland being like where's the cross-border shipper in my area I'm so sorry but I don't know them all but also like the ones in Richmond and the one in Abbotsford and I know they're far and I know it sucks but it's still like, it is still way, way worth it, especially for like in our business. Like you saw in July, we had that giant skip and August we had that giant skip. We would not have had that without the US closet. Um, I think it is worth it. I know it's a long drive. I, I don't know of any others in the lower mainland area right now, but I am still running a running list. So I will add to these as I discover more of them. Ah, we paid for a few authentications for luxury goods that we picked up throughout the year. Um, we used real authentication. They were really great. They're a lovely service. Um, no complaints here. And we also got a few things dry cleaned. Um, that was not worth it. Don't do that. Um, I, I still haven't sold some of them, you know? And then it's like I put more money into these things and they were already stained. Now they still haven't sold them. I'm like... I just, I regret dry cleaning. So paying for authentication makes sense. And I don't know about dry cleaning, but all in all, we spent around $450 on those expenses. We had a few startup costs associated with our US closet. The biggest one was buying something off US Poshmark and getting it shipped to us by Ship It To so that we could um, leave a love note and become post ambassadors. I think that was worth it, but it, you know, it wasn't worth it if we were just buying that good for no reason and we just wanted that good because the shipping to us costs more than the good did. Um, but that's how it is with shipping things from the US to Canada. If you live in Canada, you know, it's a nightmare. So that's how much that was. And then additionally, we had to pay ship it to to ship us one more thing. The time that I, Duh, I'm so upset. The time that I accidentally sent someone a For Love and Lemons dress instead of their like $10 tank top. And so they were like, this isn't what I ordered. And I was like, mm, no, it wasn't. And so normally when we get returns, every other time we've gotten one in the US, and there haven't been many, but I just tell them to keep it and we cut the losses. I couldn't with this dress, it was worth it. So we paid to have it shipped back here and it is still, for sale in our closet, but it's for sale for like $180. So that's why I couldn't just leave it there with her because I'd already paid like $30 for the consignment store. And so I paid $44 to ship it back to us. And so those two times shipping was around $100. And um, we've had various apps throughout the year that we have paid for, um, photo editing apps, Instagram content planning apps, Honestly, I've stopped using all of them other than Photo Room, so that's the only one I think that you should really pay for. Um, Photo Room is amazing, and I know that you probably know it as an app that you can use to remove the backgrounds from your cover photos for reselling, and you can, and that's amazing. But, like, I use it for almost everything. Like, I use it to make Instagram content, I use it to... Um, do all sorts of things. I I make the YouTube thumbnails with it. Like it's a really good photo editing app. It just really is. So Photo Room is a Banff. Badass mother effort. If you don't know what Banff is. And yeah, I would I would pay for it all day every day. 
yeah, so all together, all these apps that I've paid for throughout the year came to around $400. I believe Photo Room going forward is around 115 a year in Canadian dollars. So that I will continue with. The rest I will throw into the garbage where they belong. Next, we bought a ring light. Um, I bought this off Poshmark, which was awesome, but it was $50. Oh yeah, more mistakes. This is not fun for me. Okay. I promoted a few posts on Instagram and I do not recommend you do that. And I also did an Instagram giveaway once and I don't know if I recommend you do that or not. I just don't recommend you give away as much as I did because I thought that was, that was ridiculous. I think I gave away like four prizes of $50 Amazon gift cards. What was I doing? So yeah, all in all, between all of that is probably around $200 in costs and I hate that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend you do any of that. None of it. Mistakes. But I do recommend you do this if you need to. We did need to. Obviously, we keep a ton of inventory in our apartment and a lot of it does need to be hanging, mainly because it's too bulky to fit in bins. So we need more hanging space. And twice throughout the year, we got someone from TaskRabbit to come. And once they installed in this room, a closet organizer into our closet in this room and that doubled our hanging space in this room. And then another time they added, you saw just a little, it was like a little cheap little closet rod to the top of our already closet at the very roof. And that is now where we store some inventory to hang as well. So um, I think I made a post about this once on my Instagram about space saving hacks and hacks. Yes, you need them if you're in an apartment and you're reselling. But yeah, uh, that was all that, including the closet organizer and the task rabbit and all that was around $600. And I think that was an amazing choice currently. Mm -hmm. And then we went to Ikea and we finally got the bins that we use in our current inventory system. Um, as well as we got a second desk to put the second computer on. So that was around $850 at Ikea. Um, that was good. We use these bins. I like the bins. We use the desk, it's a good desk, you know, Ikea expenses. And so I believe, and I might have missed something, one or two things, one or eight things, but that was all the expenses. All in all, that adds up to around $18,000 in expenses and costs associated with running our businesses for the year. So the $35,500 that we spent over between January and the end of November, I'm sure we didn't really spend that much in December, but it would have been on inventory. The rest of all of that would have been inventory costs. So that means we spent $17,500 on inventory for our Poshmark closet. Um, but obviously what we got out of that was all those things I just mentioned. Oh, we also bought a stepladder. There will be a few things I missed. <laughs> um, but essentially what we got for that was all the tools we're going to need to run our business for the next year. We do not need poly mailers for a long time, nor do we need tape for a long time. We have enough bins to grow our closet to another thousand or so listings from where we have it now. Um, we have things that are going to stay with us for a long time, like the little mini action camera, the ring light, the hangers, the photo tent. A lot of these were one-time costs and some of them are recurring costs. Photo Room, Adobe subscriptions, um, Prime Lister are three major costs going forward as well as gas and um, cross-border shipping will also be costs going forward. And we'll also have to top up on supplies. Like I'll probably run out of dry erase markers because they'll all go dead this year sometime. And so I'll have to buy more of those um, and little things like that. Yeah, we got, we got quite a bit of stuff. We're really set up for the next year. And then on top of that, we did spend the $17,500 on inventory. I mean, probably just round up to 18,000. 18,000 on inventory. And we've made 37,000 back selling that inventory to people on various reselling platforms. So that's a pretty good return on investment. But it's not the only return on investment because all of these bins in this room right now are filled with clothes to sell. And we have still a lot of really good stuff that is for sale. We have like new in box Buscemi shoes, you know? Like we have a lot of things like that. We have nearly new in box Hermes shoes. We have a bunch of really good inventory that is still for sale. 
And I believe the last time I checked on Poshmark Canada, the total aggregate value that I had it listed for, so obviously not what we will sell it for, and also obviously not minus their 20% fee, but currently all of our inventory that is listed is listed for a total value of $60,000. So I'm really pleased with what we've spent on inventory versus what we've got out of inventory. We have a very large amount of inventory that we can sell next year. We have all the things needed to sell those things like shipping, packaging, supplies, photoing supplies, etc. And we also have about 500-ish items in our death pile still. So some of it's not listed yet. But yeah, so that's sort of an idea of why someone might spend 41 thousand dollars in their first year of business and make around 42 thousand although i'm sure those numbers are different numbers now maybe ethan can bleep out the numbers i said and tell us the real numbers from the end of december okay i like cats and coffee now i guess i have a squeaky voice i'm stephanie so yeah i feel like we got a lot for that thirty-five thousand dollars. it um set us up really well to have a business next year that we don't have to spend thousands on each month and that our only costs going forward can be maintenance costs, monthly costs, and inventory costs. And like I said, we have a quite a bit of inventory to sell, so we will spend we will spend on inventory. Yeah, we'll just we'll make good decisions going forward. I believe in us. And um that's how this year went. Um anyways. And Next year, I hope we're all sitting here having an amazing conversation about how we netted so many, many dollars, but alas, it is year one and we're stuck here in the present right now. So I hope you guys are having an amazing new year and I will see you in our next video. And thank you for following along with me. If you've gotten this far, give me a shout out in the comments and I will like share your whole posh closet or something because you're an amazing, gorgeous human. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.